So today we're going to look at addition of integers and modeling using double-sided counters. So for our purposes today, we're going to use, let me get the right pen, so we're going to use a white circle for a positive number. and then a red circle is going to equal a negative number. All right, so if we are going to if we're going to add 2 plus 7 together, we all know that the answer to that is 9, but we need to also be able to show that with counters as well and model that. So that means that I've got two white counters and I'm going to add to that seven more white counters. That gives me a total, if you count all of these counters together, I have a total of nine counters. So the answer to two plus seven is nine. That works the same if I've got two negatives and I'm going to add seven negatives. So I would have two red counters and I would add to that seven red counters. So as I look at this, I've got all the same counters. I just have one big group of nine counters that are red, so that represents a value that is negative. That's actually a nine. Let's try that again. So that's a value that's represented by negative nine. It's a little bit more difficult if we have two different signs. So the two is represented by two positive counters and the negative seven gets represented by seven red counters. So in this case we're adding two positives and seven negatives. So we don't have all the same color counters. So that brings us to the discussion of what value does one positive and one negative have? So if I gave you a dollar, that's what a positive number would be, and I took away a dollar, that's what a negative number would be, you would have zero dollars. So positive one and negative one add to give you zero. So that's the number zero with a slash through it. So a white and a red counter gives you a value that's equal to zero and this is called a zero pair. So anytime that we compare up a positive and a negative, we're going to do that. We're going to circle them and they become zero. So as we look at this problem in number three, I can pair up one positive with one negative. And those values together become zero, so I can take away those counters and they're gone from the problem. I can do that again here. I can make a second zero pair with those two and then just count what's left over. I've got one, two, three, four, five red counters. Five red counters have a value of negative five. So what that means is negative two, or I'm sorry, positive two plus negative seven has a value of negative five as seen by these counters right here. So then we can do the same thing with number four. So with number four, this time we have two red counters. And we're going to add to that seven positive counters. So again, anytime you have opposite numbers or opposite counters, 
they're going to combine a red and a white to make a zero pair. So I can circle these two. They're going to go away. It has a value of zero, and I can circle those two. They're going to go away, and that has a value of zero. So then count what's left. I've got one, two, three, four, five white counters, which gives you a value of positive five. So obviously we can't keep using counters. So at some point we have to look at the rules for addition and quit using counters. So here, your rule for addition, you've got to come up with some rules which we haven't written down here for some reason, they're missing. So here's your rule for addition. There's actually two rules, so we're going to write these down. So rule number one, and we can do a shorthand version of this. So rule number one, if you are adding, well, let's go ahead and write it this way, because I'm going to give you a shortened version. So same sign, if you're adding two numbers with the same sign, you are going to add and keep the sign. So again, if we're adding two numbers with the same sign, you're going to add and keep the sign. So add and keep the sign. The second rule, and the only other rule, would be what if we're adding two numbers with opposite signs. So opposite signs you are going to subtract and keep the sign of the larger. And that's of the larger number. So same sign, add and keep the sign. Opposite signs, like in number four above, you'll subtract and keep the sign of the larger. So, um, on your own paper or on your individual whiteboard, you're going to write the following problems. And we're not, no longer going to use counters. You can use them if you want to, but we're just going to follow the rules. For instance, we've got negative 5 and negative 6. They are the same sign. So if they're the same sign, we're going to add 5 and 6 together. So if you add 5 and 6 together, you get 11. And then we need to decide what sign it is. So we're going to add and keep the sign. Well, the sign is negative for both of these because they're the same sign. So we're going to add and keep that sign. The sign is negative, which gives us a value of negative 11. Don't have to use counters. If you know your rules, you don't have to use the counters. On number 2, we have a positive 8 and a negative 3. So this would be opposite signs. So with opposite signs, we're going to subtract and keep the sign of the larger. So we're going to subtract first 8 minus 3. 8 minus 3 is 5. Then ask yourself, which of these two have more items? Are there more positives or are there more negatives? Because 8 has a higher value, we've got more positives. So our sign is going to be a positive 5. So we're not going to put a sign in there. You don't usually put a plus in front of a number. So our answer there is just 5. And number 3, we have a negative 5 and a negative 4. They're both the same sign. So same sign, we're going to add and keep the sign. So we're going to add 5 and 4. That gives us 9. And we're going to keep the sign, which is negative. Number 4. We have a positive 3 and a negative 7. They are opposite signs, so we subtract. So 7 minus 3 is 4. And then ask yourself to figure out the sign. You're keeping the sign of the larger. Are there more negatives or are there, I'm sorry, are there more positives or are there more negatives? Since 7 is a bigger value, there's more negatives. So our sign is negative 4. 
for our answer. Number five. We have negative two and negative 11. Same sign, add and keep the sign. So you should be running these little rules around in your head so you remember what you're doing. So we're gonna add. So we get two plus 11 is 13. And we're gonna keep the sign, negative 13. So for number six, we've got a negative and a positive. So they are opposite signs, so we're gonna subtract. 13 minus nine is four. Now decide which has more, the positives or the negatives. So we've got negative nine versus positive 13. 13 is bigger, so we have more positives, so our answer stays positive. So there's an example with counters, an example without counters.